In this part of the question, we are supposed to show that f square x is equal to f inverse x, which means that we need to show two things. Number one, they must share the same expression. And number two, they must have the same domain. Okay, let's take a look at f square x. For f square x, it is viewed as if it is f f x. So a composite function of f going into f, which means that the expression is going to be 1 over 1 minus x is going to be replaced by the expression for f x. So it is 1 minus 1 minus x. And this is equal to 1 over 1 minus x minus 1 divided by 1 minus x, which is equal to 1 minus x divided by minus x which is equal to this divided by this minus 1 over x this divided by this plus 1 which means that f square x we can now have an expression of 1 minus 1 over x where the domain is going to be the domain of the first function of the composite function which is the same as the domain of fx that is why for this the domain wise it is going to be x belonging to all real numbers where x cannot be equal to 1 and x cannot be equal to 0, exactly the same as the domain of fx. Okay, next, we want to look at the right-hand side, which is the f inverse x. Okay, let's first find the expression for f inverse x. To do that, I'm going to let y be equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, and for this to be true, x must be all real numbers, and x cannot be equal to 1, and x cannot be equal to 0. Let's try to make x the subject. From what I have here, that means 1 minus x is equal to 1 over y. So x is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over y. Okay, if I were to replace y by x, I'm going to get exactly the same expression. Okay, so expression-wise, it is already almost settled. The next thing that I need to look at it is what is the domain of f inverse? Okay, for f inverse domain, we are, we are going to look at the graph of fx. If you were to sketch the graph of fx, it is not such a bad graph to draw, it is pretty simple. In fact, it is graph of a rational function that we are supposed to be sketching. And according to what we have discussed before in our topical outline, for this um, expression of a rational function, it is going to have a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 0 because this is the first type of rational function expression that we have discussed in the outline. So horizontal asymptote of y equal to 0 and a vertical asymptote of x is equal to 0. Okay, so both the x and y axis are going to be forming the asymptotes. Oh, sorry, x is equal to 1, okay? It is that vertical asymptote, okay? So horizontal asymptote, y is equal to 0, and vertical asymptote is x is equal to 1. Okay, and if I were to sketch this on my calculator, the shape is going to be something like this. Okay, but there's something that is pretty tricky about this question, okay? Because for the domain of fx, we can take up all real numbers except 1, okay, which is the vertical asymptote, so that is not a problem, but it cannot assume a value of x is equal to 0. Okay, when x is equal to 0, it is going to be 1 over here, so this point here, I'm going to use a hollow dot okay, to indicate that it is not going to be taking up this value, and here is going to be 1. Okay, this is a graph of y is equal to fx, which means that from here, if I were to try to analyze what is the range of f, a range of f is going to be from minus infinity all the way to 0. So from minus infinity to 0, but not equal to 0. So a curve bracket union from 0 all the way until 1, but not equal to 1. So until 1, but not equal to 1. Then from 1 all the way until infinity. Basically, this that we have here, right, it is going to be the same as the domain of f inverse. And this is actually exactly the same as this because it is also all real numbers except that x cannot be equal to 0 and x cannot be equal to 1. Okay, that is why f inverse is going to be like this. Okay, it is going to take up this expression which is 1 minus 1 over x okay, and x is going to be all real numbers according to the, my domain of f inverse here but x cannot be equal to 1 and x cannot be equal to 0. And that is why with these two functions that I found, where I can now conclude that f square x is going to be equal to f inverse x.